1975 Uniden 2020 HF amateur radio transceiver. This is an assessment video, so I'm going to figure out how it works, look at the critical parts, possibly bring up the radio if I can. And I need to make an assessment because I'm considering uh, restoring this. And I just want to make sure that it's a good candidate for a restoration. I picked this up from a friend of a friend. I thought it was something interesting. I thought, oh, well, that looks unusual. And I like unusual things because uh, it's always of interest, you know. So I, it's got all the normal refinements on there. It's, it's said it's a single sideband, but it's got AM. It's got carrier wave on there. There's a tune mode. Um, how this thing actually works, I don't know at this point in time. So we are on a voyage of discovery. Uh, we've got a switch up here, external, internal. I wonder if that's just the VFO. Um, I notice the VFO, is, we've got some digital sort of outputs on there. And if we turn the VFO, it scrolls this wheel round. And I guess that's how we figure out what frequency we're on. So I imagine there's a light, there's a little bulb or something in there that will be illuminating that. Um, now, it is a bit mouldy, but it, it seems to wipe off. I, think, I imagine it's been stored somewhere that's damp, you know, and uh, I think that's how it's accumulated on there. So I think if I clean that off underneath it all, I think we'll have a reasonably uh, good condition transceiver. Well, aesthetically anyway. Um, the It covers the, the basic amateur band so we've got 3.5 7 14 21 and at 28 megahertz now it goes to 28 5 29 29.5 um so that would suggest that this has got a 500 kilohertz span uh, vfo so i imagine this is free running um so yeah that's pretty standard stuff and we've got this section here with these segments now exactly what they're doing, I'm not 100% sure. I think this just adds, uh, for wherever you are on the band, just adds 100 or 200, so you don't have to keep scrolling through, um, you know, to, to get to a particular part of the band, I think. <laughs> okay, we've got an RIT, which, yeah, it's something you'd expect. Uh, we've got some RF attenuation and cow. there'll be a cow system on this to set it up so yeah we've got plate and, and load well because it's got a tube uh, PA in this that will be to load up the um, to tune the PA and I do like this meter it's very it's huge but uh, yeah it looks actually really cool so so what's the plan with this? Well, I'm going to try and resurrect it. I don't think it's had any power on it in a, in a long time. And it would certainly be foolhardy just to plug it in the mains. Because this thing will is mains, you know, you plug it in. It will run on 13.8 uh, volts as well. So there must be some kind of inverter or vibrator type circuitry in there to make up the high voltages for the B plus for the tubes. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, let's have a look, uh, we'll have a look inside. So the radio's got a removable lid, comes away like so. So that means if you wanna get inside there and have a little twiddle, it's not too difficult to get in here. Now having a look, it looks like everything's here. Um, again, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. So we're going to figure this out as we go along. Um, but this is where the PA uh, will reside. There's a screw missing there, so someone's obviously been in there at some stage. And imagine at this age, I'd be surprised if <laughs> somebody hasn't. Um, but yeah, we've got some tuning down here. We've got another tube here. Uh, exactly what the tube that is, I don't know. I mean, as I said, I think it's a couple of pentodes in there, the six one four sixes. I think I'm right in saying the pentodes. Um, and we've got this whacking great transformer here. Now this will run um, from about 100 volts and there's various taps. So it'll do the US 
um, and European sort of voltages. I think the highest voltage you can give it is just over 230 volts. Um, but yeah, that's here. Now, of course, we've got to make up some high voltage for the uh, B plus and the, uh, there'll be an extra high tension which will be supplying the tubes. It's normally between seven, 800 volts or there thereabouts for the output tubes. Now, exactly how it's doing that, I don't know at this time. They sometimes have a multiply circuit or, um, now as I said, this thing will run off 13.8 volts as well. So what makes this interesting, I just wonder how it's making that voltage. I wonder if there's a vibrator uh, in there or possibly some inverter. And I just wonder what these are doing. These might be just transistors might be acting as a linear regulator. Uh, I'm not sure. We need to dive into the circuit diagram. So we've got a relay here and we've got these cards. So we've got various cards they seem to slot in. Now this was quite popular back in the 70s. They obviously thought that it's a really neat idea. Um, I suppose it is, but if you're servicing, it's a pain in the rear because you know they're always buried away unless you've got extender cards of course and and of course i haven't um so they they will go in there's basically an edge connector that uh it'll connect into from directly for you know the contacts directly from the circuit board i imagine but it all looks like it's there um if we just bring the camera over that's something i found that was unusual don't know if you can see down there, but there's a speaker. The speaker's on the bottom of the radio, which is a bit bizarre. But uh, I certainly haven't seen it before, but I uh, don't know. We'll see how it goes. And if we manage to get it going, we'll, we'll give it a test. Okay, obviously, this is the back of the unit. Uh, we've got a fan here. This is to cool down the... Uh, PA compartment, obviously, because there's two tubes in there. Um, antenna socket, SA239, standard stuff. But we've got this power connection here, which is quite unusual. Um, I've certainly not seen anything like that before. It looks military stroke aviation type uh, connector. So I don't think I'm ever going to be able to find a, a, a cable for this because uh, it certainly it didn't come with one. Uh, we've got this thing here for accessories. Exactly what that's doing again, I'm not sure. Uh, we've got a facility to plug in an external VFO. There's some bias there, which I imagine is for biasing the tube, the grid voltages, or grid current rather. Um, and yeah, meter adjust. Yeah, exactly what they're doing, I don't know. And everything seems to be on these RCA sockets. So we've got a key, we can put a, a push to talk in there um i'm not sure what these other things are doing this is obviously an extension speaker phone in phone out patch yeah we've got this transverter output on there now yeah, that's interesting and rf power amplifier so you can actually switch it off so if you're using using it you don't need to i don't know whether that'll switch the high voltage off or just may switch off the filaments to the tubes um, so they're not sitting there burning away so i think that's probably quite a nice little option but uh this certainly seems very well made now i've cleaned this section here i just put a bit of furniture polish on it and you can see it's it's tidied up you know quite well so i think this will this will clean up so okay let's get it apart and let's take a closer look Okay, so this is the underside of the unit. Uh, this connector here was connected to the speaker. But having a look, it looks like it's all there. It doesn't look like it's been molested. It doesn't look like it's been used as a donor radio, which it's all there. Now, taking a look, look at it, you can definitely tell it's from the 70s. Um, look at it, these resistors and stuff. Um, but it looks incredibly well made. And, you know, these here, these are the edge connectors that connect to the circuit boards that plug in, obviously, from the top. Now, there's a thing with these. I was reading on the internet and they're saying they have a tendency um, to crack. And it's simply because 
you know the plastic they're made from it's i mean it's 50 years old so um the it changes its composition and becomes brittle and they tend to crack and then they don't make correct contacts with the board that's plugged in them but they all look okay which is a good sign um obviously they're using looms to connect everything up this is how it was done and this section here is the underside of the pa uh, they're using quite a lot of ceramic capacitors in here. So that's, you know, disc ceramics are generally quite reliable. Uh, that looks like there's a couple, they look to me like polystyrene, uh, not polystyrene, polyester. Polyester capacitors, again, normally quite reliable. And these ones here could be mica, not 100% sure. Uh, they can be problematic. And then up here, we've got the filter capacitors. Now, this is the underside of them. They've got some resistors across as for discharging, uh, but 50 year old electrolytics, you know, don't ha you know, don't last that long. So, you know, the, a lot of the Japanese uh, electrolytics from this era, by now they, they normally start to fail. Um, I think a lot to do with it is the environment they've been kept in, and if they've been kept in you know extreme conditions where it's really hot in the summer and freezing cold you know minus in the winter it really destroys them they're kept at a steady temperature so i believe that, that they do have a tendency to last longer um and it depends what kind of life they've had you know you, you know again it's something we don't know uh with the radio so but I'm not going to change the capacitors. I'm not changing any caps on this unless I have to. This is a resurrection. So what I'm going to do is figure out what's wrong with it. I'll just do the bare minimum just to get it up and going. And we'll just see if we can make an assessment on it. Um, so if, here, this is the power socket. This is where it connects. So I've got to figure out where to tack onto. Now I'm going to feed this with 13.8 volts. Uh, I'm going to see if there's that switch there that's it says switch on power amplifier. So I'm hoping that in the off position that will turn off any HT and filament uh, voltages to the tubes. Um, I'm hoping, I don't know. <laughs> so again, we'll look at the set schematic. Uh, so we've got to figure out where we can tack on to. And I'll take a few tests, but I'll, let's have a look at the uh, schematic. But there's some nice stuff happening here. There's all this, uh, you know, there's all these cogs and stuff. This is for the for the VFO. It's all beautifully made. And um, yeah, there's some work there. Just imagine these would have cost you something like a couple of months wages probably uh, to purchase one of these in the mid seventies. I'd say it'd be expensive in today's money. I don't know. Um, but this is a free running VFO, it plugs in at the back there. We've got uh, these capacitors down here, and all these cogs, and these look like nylon. But it all looks there. So, yeah, let's get into the schematic. Let's go and figure out where we can connect onto and, ha and get a general idea of how this thing's working. Okay, so this is the schematic diagram for the radio. Now, this, if we zoom in down here, and you can see this is for a Tempo 2020 amateur radio transceiver, which is exactly the same. So they, these radios must have come out branded as uh, Tempo as well as Uniden. There may be more, I don't know, but um, this is what I've managed to dig up. Now, I got this uh, schematic, which is really useful, um, from a user group. And these guys can be found on Group. Uh, dot io there's loads of information on here loads of schematics someone is taking the time to put all this together which i'm very very thankful for roger ve7 lb um so yeah hats off to you mate <laughs> you've done some great work in here which we'll, we'll go through later there's color coding on the schematics and all kinds of uh, stuff going on so let's just zoom back out a touch okay so well, so let's start at the beginning. So we want to put power onto the radio, and this is 
that connector on the back now there's two it shows two connects here because it's simply two different configurations so we can either connect an AC power cord which goes into the mains and that connects at pin 12 and pin 7 now there's also pins here that are joined together now this is done in the plug now it must be a very special plug i don't know i've never seen one i don't even know i've got no idea what they look like but i imagine you'll have a one plug for mains and another plug or connector that goes on for uh connected up to dc power so obviously this one is for the ac power cord and then we've got the other one here which is for the dc power now again this is quite complicated you can see a lot of these pins are all connected up and this goes off and you can actually supply that with 13.8 volts uh, now this is where it gets a bit complicated so let's go over to this is the the actual socket here so this is all the socket or the connector that's actually on the radio that is this bad boy here so depending on obviously which plugs in here it's going to configure these pins in a certain way so let's just have a general look at it it all seems a bit complicated but you know a lot of this sort of especially the circuit design and stuff harps back to the 1960s uh, and we'll sort of kind of try and cover some of that with the limited bit of knowledge i have got about uh, this kind of equipment so this is our power transformer here that is that great big lump that was sitting in there and it looks very well made actually so what we've got is essentially these two uh connections here with well, this is a part of the circuit so what is happening is this is where our line voltage comes up obviously it passes through this fuse by the way i took the there's a fuse carrier on the back of the radio i removed it opened it up there's no fuse in there which would suggest that at some stage the fuse has blown or kept blowing and possibly the radio has been retired um, so we have to do a bit more a bit of investigation uh, certainly before we even consider putting uh, any mains voltage on this thing um, so what have we got well this section here there's these two windings here this is the primary side of the transformer so what we wind up with we've got O. 100 110 117 now these are the voltages and depending on what kind of configuration depending on what line voltage what country you're in etc etc um it, this is this will be configured you'd have to configure this in a certain way now at the moment this is configured for 100 volts and for 100 volts what they do they parallel these two windings together and you can see that's how they're wired so one side of the line cord goes to the 100 there one side of the line cord goes to 100 there and the o's you know the ov and the ov on the transformer are again paralleled up so if we i'm in the uk obviously um we use 230 volts here at 50 hertz so we look here so this is from the user manual and the user manual has actually got some good circuit explanations and descriptions and stuff in it there isn't a service manual as such well I certainly haven't found one but we can get by with this sorry it's a little bit out of focus but yeah it's better than nothing um, it is legible so you can see with the line voltages here it just basically what it's saying is you can see how it's you know we connect up so so for 110 again it's paralleled it parallels those circuits and you know obviously we get up to um you know well, i'm at 230 volts so here what they're doing is they're actually running the circuits in uh, series so 
what we have got is power connector which is one side of the mains and we've got where it says fuse holder that's obviously the other side of the, the mains voltage but passing via the fuse that comes down so one side goes to the OV on one of the windings the other windings are then connected up in series so the 117 goes to the zero and the, then the then the output at uh, the output the 117 volts goes to the other side of the mains and you know if you check 117 plus 117 is, is 234 volts that's how they're arriving at it now there's this little tap off here at 100 volts and that says two blower so that must be the fan on the back so i imagine the fan on the back is 100 volts well it is according to the schematic okay so let's get back to here so that that is basically our primary side now on the secondary side it all gets a bit heath robinson because we've got this winding here which is broken up there seems to be like a center tap in the middle and what this does if you forget these two trans transistors here there's these two transistors we'll come back to that in a second and just forget those this is a it's basically a full wave rectification so one side will be our ov and this side here with these two diodes coming off each end of the winding uh, will be our positive so that will be given us uh, a positive dc voltage obviously rectified at this point now this voltage is the 12 volts rail there this thing you know the, the, this that's what this wine is for it's for 12 volts i've figured it out um okay so if you look at the other windings we've got this 330 volt winding on the secondary side now what this is doing this comes along and one side of it goes into this board here it's called the rectifier unit now what we have here is some diodes that are in series with each other there's some capacitors here uh, exactly what the, the capacitors are doing i'm not sure but this makes up a multiplier circuit so at 330 volts you've got these two um rectifiers even though they're doubled up there's two rectifiers is what that basically what, what it's doing is and then if we look at the other side of the the ov that comes up goes onto the board then comes back off it again and goes between these two capacitors now i was talking thinking these capacitors were res um, like filter capacitors and i think this was, was the two big ones that we we're looking at but it's not it makes up this voltage multiplier circuit now this is a i think this is a full wave doubling circuit and it's a bit hard to sort of work it out the the way the circuit you know due to its layout but if we look here i found a website here and this is a full wave voltage multiplier so what this is doing is obviously we've got ac that comes in obviously your transformer we know we've got a transformer so it's going to we've got 330 volts here we've got these two capacitors and these two dies and how this works is it just stacks the voltage on top of each other on these capacitors uh, via these uh, diodes because obviously they're only switching on on parts of the on of the waveform and what this creates is a dc voltage and what we we are getting if we go back to the circuit so at point at this point here pin 10 we've got 800 volts dc through this circuit now the 800 volts is being used for the um 
EHT for the uh, the PA so if we come up here you can see these two tubes here and I imagine that is as a choke yeah there's a choke here but this is our 800 volts here that goes up now there's another tube as well here which will need you know B plus voltage of uh, 300 volts so if we get back down okay so yeah if we there's another tap here 240 volts of course you know when we look this is RMS when we actually look at the peak voltages uh, they are much higher so this is basically gets rectified at this point and there's obviously there's a, there is a filter cap but that's a filter cap, 100 microfarads at 350 volts and that is creating our B plus which is you know which is 300 volts and we can look on the schematic and we've actually got a schematic which obviously on that drawing it doesn't really show you um, the values of the components or the voltages but here it does so if we kind of zoom in on this it's a little bit as you can see it's just about legible so yeah we've got a 240 AC which I imagine comes in here that gets rectified and we've literally got 300 volts coming out there now there's more there is more we've got uh, the the final bias in this I imagine this is for the grid currents but it's all generated via this board now this board can be unplugged which is quite nice so we can you know it's a it's a it, it just plugs into one of those edge connectors and the beauty of it is when we actually physically disconnect it we completely disconnect the windings to the rest of the circuit so here we've got that you know you're probably thinking why have we got that link over well they've probably done that so that you can actually disable everything by simply removing this board i think okay well what what do we want to do well if the fuse is blown what i want to do is um inspect the circuits make sure the capacitors are okay make sure we've got no shorted diodes uh, that could possibly make the fuse blow or we could have a bad transformer which is yeah it's pretty much game over unless I can get another one but um, I'm hoping that isn't the case so what I'm going to do first well let's run the radio up now we should be able to sort of run this on 13.8 volts now how this works is you've got these two transistors here which is in the middle of these rectifiers now the bases of these trans transistors are connected to this winding here and what this is is like a self-perpetuating circuit it's a self-oscillating circuit it's a bit sort of down and dirty the way it's done but this is how they used to do things this was years ago they used to use multi vibrators which was literally a switch it's like a relay and it used to it was called you know because it would vibrate you could hear the noise that they make and it's just two contacts and what it would do it would break the uh, dc and it would allow you to use a transformer and step up the voltages from typically for car radios you know because of the the tubes in the old uh, car radios would need 280 300 volts or something and in order to get that voltage that's how they did it now i think this design here harps back from a motorola design which was primarily there to replace the mechanical multi vibrators and what well i say multi vibrators a vibrator and i think what this does depending on how which plug you put in over here how it configures <laughs> it configures if you're in dc it enables that circuit to work um there's quite a bit to it but 
yeah that seems to be it now our 12 volts comes ordinarily if we we're in mains operation comes off along here comes down and goes in to pin 9 now pin 9 if we look on the main if we just look on an AC power cord so pin 9 is connected to pin 10 in the plug I know it's all a bit complicated but bear with me so pin 9 connects from here to pin 10 and I reckon I reckon that is just the standard 12 volt rail so if we put 12 volts DC on there we're bypassing everything else we're just feeding the low voltage side of the radio and if we put another connection on pin 14 which is the ground I think all things being equal the radio should run obviously we won't get our um, B plus and the EHT and all that good stuff but initially to get the thing going and I, I mean I just want to assess to see the condition of the radio and if it's not too far gone then I may make a decision to actually fully restore it but you know that's why we just want to kind of resurrect it so I reckon if we connect there that is going to bring up the radio okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to connect up the DC to this point here so I'm going to put 13.8 volts this would be the positive uh, this is pin 10 if you I don't know if you can see that but it's it's actually molded it tells you what number it is so I'm just using these uh, grabby leads this is connected to my bench power supply it only supplies two amps but i can't see it pulling any more than that and the ground which i'm using yellow <laughs> good color uh, i'm just going to connect to here if it can go on yeah okay so we set to 13.5 i'll give that a bit more 13.5 that's 14 yes 13.83 let's turn on cdc oh she's drawing current which is good okay so we're drawing oh just a bit over 800 milliamps and we have action we have got action on here so the the backlight for this dial has come on let's have someone turn some of this lighting off and then it might make it a little clearer that looks really cool the radio's come up it's obviously it's illuminated here i'm running back lights here but now i've got move, movement on the meter it is receiving somewhat I'm currently on am this is uh, a shortwave broadcast station now it seems very sensitive this now I, from what i've read uh, on the insects, they are incredibly sensitive receivers. In fact, they're, they're, they're apparently very good, uh, these receivers. So this one isn't. <laughs> it's, it's sensitive, but it sounds absolutely terrible. So that's probably just a case of uh, electrolytic capacitors and combined with a speaker that's, that's been at the elements. Um, but the things I was concerned about so we've got the sideband now th this unit uses um, separate filters for lower sideband and upper sideband they're diff they've got their own filters that was another thing i was worried about they seem fine they yeah, there's plenty of selectivity in those and the, and the you know the nice and bright so which is good so that, that's a, a plus now there are a number of things on here we've got a pot here it just keeps turning around that's the uh, carrier i should be able to find one of those and i did mention uh when i was talking about the span of this it is actually only a hundred kilo kilohertz so these buttons 7.1 and this this adds 100 kilohertz if you go to the top 90 and then zero zero and 
it does sound pretty cruddy. Now, there is another problem. The stations. If we go on to Carrier Wave, it does this. And I don't understand why. This is almost as if it's... Seems to be receiving something on the S meter, but I'm not sure what's happening here. Something, maybe a switching issue. Yeah. Uh, RIT, yeah, it kind of works. All the pots need cleaning up, so that's not a major issue. I'm quite confident the receiver's okay. In fact, the, the bulk of the radio is okay. It needs a tune. Wants a few issues sorting out. Wants a complete recap, really. But yeah, we'll see how the transformer gets on because you know I'm not going to invest any time in it if the transformer's shot. So, um, but overall, it works quite well. So the next thing I'm going to do is test this transformer, and for me. I'm just going to throw some power on it. But uh, I have removed the uh, card. It comes from down this section here. This is the regulator board. There is a fault on this. Uh, we'll get back to that in a second. But I've also checked these uh, tap voltages. They're correct for 234 volts, which is obviously the voltage we need. These transistors... And I wasn't sure what they were for. Obviously, we looked at the circuit diagram, and these TO3 uh, transistors are used uh, for you, when you in 13.8 volt, you know, a DC mode, and this basically inverts and uh, operates the transformer. Okay, before we put the any power on the transformer, I have tested these two diodes. Uh, these are the rectifier diodes on the low uh, voltage uh, winding of the transformer. So they're good, and there's no shorts on those uh, TO3 transistors. So I think we're good to go. Okay, so I'm connected on the back to pins 11 and 12. Now that supplies the primary side of the transformer. Uh, we've got the fuse out at the moment. Obviously, I've just got those connected up to the multimeter. So if I put the fuse in, this is a 3-amp fuse. Uh, I've got that uh, from the uh, manual. It said recommended to use a 3-amp fuse for 230 volts. Um, yeah, and we're getting 0.7 of an ohm. So it's seeing the primary side of the transformer. Now... This is 230 volts I'm applying here. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> it is dangerous. Uh, so I've also got a ground on here as well, and I'm protected with an RCD, but extreme caution. Uh, this is definitely not the way to do it. Okay, so I applied power. I didn't film it. It wasn't very exciting, trust me. Um yeah it blew the fuse really violently i don't know if you can see that but uh yeah that's really gone now this is three amp it's a standard blow fuse and uh yeah it just took it out even took the 16 amp breaker out on my fuse board uh so i thought well it could be that there's something on the secondary side holding it down now obviously because we've removed the card the rectifier card it's that's unlikely the only other thing that was connected was the 12 volts so i, I just cut the wires uh, which basically feed these two transistors i mean they looked okay but yeah it didn't make any difference so you know i wound up with two really heavily uh, violently blown fuses so we can safely say that this transformer is shot um, it's a bit strange because normally on the primary side they tend to go open circuit 
However, I, it does look like at this point there's been some damage here, which is a bit uh, a bit weird. So someone may have had the lid off it and something's dropped in there and possibly shorted the windings. Uh, but it's, I looked at it, there's nothing obvious. But uh, yeah, it's not a happy bunny. So as for the restoration this is not a prime candidate so i've got a choice now i either uh break the thing up or let it sit around and see if i can get hold of a transformer from somebody who is breaking one uh, it's a shame really because everything else is in reasonably good condition you know all the uh, variable capacitors and such like you know are all good the mechanisms are working well um so yeah bummer yeah <laughs> so i'm on the scout for a transformer um i'll see how it goes if i come across one i will make another video anyway if you watch the video this long i'd like to say thanks for watching and thank you to all my subscribers we'll catch you in the next video